The second step of instrument orientation, which is telling the instrument where it stands here at IPR at Tigari exactly at this point, is that you are free to put instrument where you want for the purpose of getting the inf information for at once with the uh, to get more information at once. So uh, you can freely put in instrument where you want. You doesn't have to go to occupy point as a known point as I have done before. The step of revenue are the same. You have to push the the tripod legs firmly in the ground to secure the instrument. As I've said, this instrument is this instrument is very expensive. So the second step, you are going to adjust the tripod legs distances to make sure that the booth eye bubble, which is this one, is in the center. Let me go to this function. You press function, and you go to level. You press enter. Then it boosts by the booth eye bubble is not appearing. You have to adjust the tripod legs. Have to adjust the tripod legs. After adjusting the tripod legs, you can see that the bull bubble eye has come somewhere next, near to the center of it. So you have to use the tripod delivering screws. It is telling you that I move in this direction, like this, like this, very slowly, because this instrument is very sensitive. Then it is telling me that I move the third leg, which is this one. I move it, the center. Then it tells me that I use this one. I use this one, like this, like this, like this. Good. Now you can see that the instrument is very leveled. All the tripod legs are leveled, that's why it is ticked. Okay, then you, co you press continue. After leveling the instrument, you go back to the programs. You press enter. You go in session setup. You press enter. You continue. Then uh, it is, you have to go to look for the section. Then now we are, we are in the section option. Then you can press enter. It is telling me what is the name of this occupying point. Because it is a free station, it doesn't have a known point. So I'm going to name it like, uh, let me call it P1 or P7. No problem. I can enter here. Then I change from A, B, C. If I press here and the number appears, it means that I'm going to type the letters. So I can use P, P, 1. I go back here. I press S4 to change the, from, the, from the letters to number. Then this is P1. Then it is telling me again what is the height of the reflector. Here we don't need the height of instrument and the height of reflector. Because the resection needs the, the platform, the reverdy platform. So instead of entering, sorry, instead of entering any value that it, this instrument is above, any height above the instrument, above the ground point, I'm going to type zero. 
I type zero like this. I press OK. Then I'm going to continue. Then it is telling me enter the target point. That point it is P. It is uh, STT one two STT two. I'm going to look it because it is already in the folder of this. Then I'm going to go to the listing. I go to look for STTT1. STT1. That is STT2. Then I press OK. And I'm going to cite. Uh -huh. Like this. You can see I'm citing there. Then I'm going to measure. Good. Then in this display, there is more option. Can you measure, please, more points? Because at least to make the orientation, I need at least two points. So I'm going to move to the next. You can go to the next point, which is STT1. I press the option, which is F1, saying that measure more points. I need at least two points. List, then I go to STT1. STT1. I press OK. Since I first have finished targeting the first point, it, you can see in the screen it is telling me that what is the site, the target point. The, you can see that there is a second point that I'm going to cite, which is ST1. Then I go here, I cite very well. Then I press measure. Good. It is showing me the accurate in height and the accurate in position. I have nine millimeters in horizontal and the one, one millimeter in vertical. It means these are the accuracy that I, I, I have. So it means that these are the arrowable tolerance error that instrument can have. So this is okay. Then I can press F4. In this display, display you can see more option. Measure more point, I can measure more point, but at least two points are enough for the section orientation. Then I press F4 to compute. It gives me this coordinate that I needed. You can see that one I called the PP1 when I was starting. So it means that this instrument is, is located at this east thing, nothing, and it is, has got this height. You can see the name that I've given it, it is PP1. It has calculated its coordinate. So I can press set. You can see station orientation set. Good. Now I'm done with resection or orient, uh, free station method of orienting the instrument. Then the last step I'm going to go with, it is that I'm going to take a sample of about 100 meters here to show how can you collect the data. So after I have given this instrument orientation, this instrument knows that it is standing at IPR Sichigari at this location. So now I'm able now to collect the data which will be relevant to this position. So it means that I'm, not, I'm sure that I'm not going to be surprised that the data I'm collecting are going to be found somewhere else. No, they'll be located here at IPR Sichigari. Please make sure that the good Accurate measurement starts with the good instrument orientation or good instrument stationing. So let us start with data collection. He's going to start with this side. He, he steps two meters, two meters in the center, then he continues. Uh, the next step is data collection. When you are going to do data collection, in the instrument menu, there is, you enter in the program, you go to, now you're not going to go to station setup because it is already there, we go to survey. But before we go to survey, you have to go to manager and see the folder or the job you are working in. So you press in to go to this job. You see I'm working in a, a folder which is called control IP. 
then I can even choose another job to work so that my data that I'm going to collect are going to be stored. Then I can choose. There are more folders. There are more folders. Then me, I'm willing to use this control IP as a folder. Then I press continue. Then I go back to, to the program. I go to survey. I enter. I press enter to survey. Then it is telling me just collect a lot of data as you see on the screen. Then I press OK. Then the first point that I'm going to collect is called what? This is the edge of the road. I have to call this edge of the road. I press enter to, to, to give a name here. Edge. I, I just give uh, like uh, it is a symbol. Edge G one. Then I delete the remaining. Edge G one. It is going. I I am going to know that this is the edge of the existing road. Then I press enter. Then I measure that. I set that edge of the road. I press measure. You can see the edge one is calculated. Then the next is edge two. You go there. It's okay, there. You can go and you press also measure. And the coordinates you calculated, you can go in the center. For the center, you have to be sure that you give it the code, it the code of center, C1. You can only call it C1 and you delete the remainings, C1. To know that the the center of alignment is that, existing alignment is that one. You can press measure for the center one. Good, he can go to the next point. So these are the points that you are going to use as the, showing you that these are the existing, that this is the existing alignment. Because sometimes designing the final location of a highway you need to know the existing data, to know from which point are we going and from, from which point to which point we are going. So you can go to the next point. All this data helps us in decision making for the final location of a highway. Good. You can step about 10 meters as a change, for example. Good. That is 10 meter. Good. The process is the same as I've done for the first chain. Good. The same, the process is the same. We are pressing the measure to measure these points. You can go to near the center. We press measure. You can go in the center. Please remember to change. Remember to change the code of the data you are collecting. Good. Because someone is going to process this data may be not you. When you are doing data correction of a road or of an existing highway, you have to take care of uh, these things. The underground services, like a water pipe, existing water drainages. Um, unfortunately, here this existing road does not have the, the drainage, but you cannot uh, ignore correcting the, this electrical information, which is the, the street light. You have to correct it. We have to correct these trees because someone who is going to decide, decide the final location of this highway, he may pass in this street light position. Yet when you have given him that the, at this session we have, we have the street light, he can see somehow he can push away or he can decide in a, what you, or like a, in expropriation. He can just be deal with the 
people in charge of this switch light or electric share and reg and whatever, they can remove it and put it aside. So if you don't give him this information, he's, or he or she's going to pass through this pipe, so this street light. It is better that you give all the necessary information of a road that are existing on the existing highway location. So we are now, now going to correct this uh, electric street light. We're going to name it ST, street light. You give that code, you tap somewhere, have the feed the book. You don't go to the feed when, when you don't have a feed the book. Then this is ST. To know these codes, street light, ST, then ST1. You call it ST1. Then you go to it, you cite. Then the ST1 is stored in this folder. Good. He can go to that tree as a final data. Then uh, you can give this one an abbreviation, a code of T. Just the tree to 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 know to make sure that this is a tree. You can call it a T1. T1. Enter. Then you press measure. Then all this formation of a road are stored in this machine. Then we can go. We can do what we can now export them. After doing data collection, after doing data collection. You need to put all the data on a USB disk, or you need to download them from the instrument and for the further processing. So I'm going, you can see here, there is a port where you can put your USB disk here and a cable to directly connect to the computer. Then now I'm going just to use a USB to export it. I put in a flash disk. I can close or not, but for, to secure the whatever, I have to close it. You can see in the programs, I have data transfer. I have transfer. Then I can go through the data transfer. I can go in export. You can see the USB stick is appearing. And the, what you have to make sure that you have to select, it is the job because you may not be caring about this and if eventually find that you have downloaded the folder that you don't need. So I, I, I'm sure that I was working in the folder which is called control IP. Then I have to continue. Then uh, this is the control IP and the format. So I have to continue. The folder is still there. Then I have also to press continue. They are telling me that uh, the, the, the folder I want to download, it is all on my st USB stick. What I do, I'm going to rename, or I can do the overwrite. So I'm going to rename it. I can press here. Let me name it one, 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 like this. Then press enter. Then I press continue. Then also I do continue. So you can see, I'm downloading the data from this instrument, my USB disk. So <coughs> you can see data, data transfer measurement is successfully completed. Then, do you want to transfer more? No, I don't need. You can then. All the data I had collected in this instrument, total station, they are now all this flash disk. So it means that I can insert this flash disk on my computer and get all the data I have done and process with the father what. So I think that for more you can, maybe you can, you, we shall have a time for the tutorial of data processing or road design with the data I have created on the feed. Thank you.